Aromatic sulfonation is how you add an HSO3 group to a benzene ring. But what's interesting is that most of the work gets done before you even add the benzene. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, tries to give away one of its H's at a very, very high rate, and it can even do so to SO3 or sulfur trioxide. Now there's many, many good resonance structures for sulfur trioxide. The one that we'd like to think about right now is the one that has two double bonded oxygens and one single bonded oxygen. We're going to show it that way to show that there can be slightly negative charge density on really any of the oxygens here. And from H2SO4, one of the H's can attach to that particular oxygen. I should also note that there's a positive formal charge on the sulfur here. When you add the H plus or the H from the H2SO4, you end up with a sulfur that still has its positive one formal charge, is still double bonded to two oxygens, but now is bonded to an OH group. Calling it an OH group is not the right thing to do, but it might help you remember how to structure this, okay? Now that slightly positive, or rather positive formal charged sulfur there is ripe for attack from a benzene. Now the electrons in benzene are delocalized, but with a strong positive charge to attract the electrons, you can get an attack. That's going to produce for you the same hexagons of carbon, except one of the bonds will not be there. Instead, you'll be single bonded to that S, which is double bonded to two O's and an OH. And you'll have a formal positive charge plus one on the adjacent carbon. Now there are resonance structures that help to stabilize this. Now there's still an H on this carbon here, and technically there's still an H on this carbon here, although usually neither of those are shown in these skeletal structures. All it takes is the presence of any base, the HS, the, uh, the HSO4 minus that was produced here does not count because it's a weak acid, but almost any other base that you can think to add to this can steal that H away those electrons will return to the double bond from whence they had come, and you'll end up with this benzene. Those two bonds stay intact. You have reconstituted the double bond there, and in the process, added on this sulfonyl group. There we go. Now, this is a mechanism, even though I haven't shown too many arrows here. We've got Sulfur trioxide getting protonated to become HSO3 minus. We have a nucleophilic attack. Well, I guess I shouldn't call it a nucleophilic, but there is an attack of these electrons towards this sulfur here that produces this. And then the addition of a base produces that. The last thing I want to point out here is that this though it does not look like the kind of thing that should be stable is because there are three other two other valid resonance structures here this double bond could get displaced to reform a double bond there i'll draw you a quick sketch here just in case you want to see it i'm just going to call this hso3 minus for brevity that double bond is still intact but we've formed a double bond here and the positive charge has been delocalized to that carbon there. And similarly, that double bond could delocalize to assuage that positive charge. You still end up with the same hexagon. You have your double bond there. You have your HSO3 here, but you've moved that double bond to here. That gives you a positive charge there. At delocalization isn't cyclic because it can't go all the way around the ring, but it doesn't mean that the positive charge isn't delocalized at all. Here we are, sulfonation of benzene. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.